We're gonna go find the next guest for you. I just worried about entertainment tonight. I just like I don't want any suits. I don't want the cameras to burst through the doors going, ah. No, 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 bad news today. Thank you guys. Chicago. Um, sure, Jeff, what is your plan for the day? Well, I don't think we're going to do that. Well, you say that you're not going to do that. You say that you're not going to do that. You say that you're not going to do that. You say that you're not going to do that. You say that you're not going to do that. You say that you're not going to do that. You say that you're not going to do that. You say that you're not going to do that. It's going to be a hologram before you know it. I'll be backstage just going, woo! And it'll be like, Why is it I can't hear you, but I can hear everybody else? I can't hear you in my headphones. No, like, oh, Matt. So, no, no, you guys talk about yourselves. Yeah. Well, Robbie. I like your shirt. Thank you. It's not mine, but I'd like it too. Who's this in? It's wardrobe department at Entertainment Tonight. Look at that. Someone's getting dressed for a living. Oh, man. It's nice when somebody else picks out your clothes when you have kind of... No idea what you're doing when it comes to clothes. I've been wearing the same Target t-shirt and jeans since I was 16 years old. <laughs> Mas Massimo. Massimo, that's right. I even buy my suits from there. M Moreno, Moreno. <laughs> Matt Cohen, we're all real proud of you back home. Oh man, yeah. Excited about... Uh, Local boy makes good. I mean, the, you know, the superstars that you get that you're hobnobbing with. Yeah. It's, it's an interesting job, guys. It's just quite an yeah. extraordinary moment. When, when Benedict Cumberbatch was like, we're all backstage, we're all talking about how great looking you are. Listen. I was like, that, I, I'm done. That's good. No, I'm good now. Yeah, I wanted to quit also and join the MCU. Like he said, I should be doing. I yeah. wonder why am I holding this microphone when Benedict Cumberbatch, Oscar award worthy, tremendous actor, marvelous Mr. Strange, Dr. Strange, Says I should be in the MCU, I should drop the microphone and join the MCU. That's how easy Hollywood should be. But it's not, so I'm here! I like Marvelous Mr. Strange. I, well, well, some people <laughs> call him Doctor, but to me, he'll never he'll always be Marvelous it's Mr. Strange. It's a well, mashup. And let's good. also be honest, he had to, I mean, he had to earn that degree. He started as a Mr. Strange. Right. <laughs> then, you know, years at Strange Medical School. Not to be, not to be confused with uh, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Dr. Maisel, that's Dr. Maisel. Dr. Maisel. <laughs> The marvelous <laughs> Dr. Maisel. <laughs> this is the problem with entertainment tonight is I never know what I'm talking about. There's, you have to watch so many different shows and, and right. stories. You look at people and you wonder, what show am I talking to you about in this moment? You just can't. Well, now that makes sense. When I'm on the red carpet and someone's like, hey, so how, how is that for you? I'd be like, <laughs> you didn't really see this, did you? We keep it vague. We keep it yeah. really vague, and then uh, sometimes I don't even say the celebrity's name because I might call them the wrong Right. I, dude, I would be the worst at it. Oh, no. I'd be terrible. Uh, right? Oh. You'd be better than me. No, because I would panic. Right. I mean, theoretically, I know you're, I know, you're like, oh, you know everybody in your neighborhood. But that's right. like casual, no pressure, cameras aren't rolling. I get nervous when somebody hands me their autograph, the, a thing to autograph, and he's like, what's your name? And they have Beth, and I'm like, M. Chet. Oh, dude, that happens to me all the time. When I sign my name, I'll sign it, J. That's not my name. <laughs> like, so, I feel yeah. like the pressure's on, man. I yeah. The worst when they're like, the, I mean, we've talked about this, when they, when someone makes, works hard on something. When someone wants me to sign that little baby car, I'm like, okay, just right on top here. Okay, uh, okay, here I go. Going in, I'm signing it. And sign it right now. Here you go. <laughs> or they give you the piece of art they've been working on for six months. Yeah. And they're like, go ahead and sign this. And you're like, all right, right here. No, not there. Yeah, that's the one, dude. I go, like, I go next to my face, no. Ah. Yeah. Well, how about just a black dot next to my face? Yeah. And, then, and then they're like, really? Everybody did it in silver and you picked gold? Like, what is the problem here? So, so the funny really is that when we get the posters and uh, you see the other actors have all signed it, and sometimes other actors will put the person's name and you just copy what they put and you'll also put the person's name. So like one time there was like David Hayden Jones or something inside, it's like to Zoe, and so I'm like, to Zoe, and she's like, yeah, my name's Claire. 
I, for some reason he thought my name was Zoe. I was like, oh shit, now there's... <laughs> you can Zoe be a nickname? Uh, that's hilarious. Uh, I like how it, we, went, we went from Matt, who's withstanding the pressure of being live constantly, to how actually we can't sign our own name. <laughs> the disparity is pretty substantial. Should we dive into questions, fellas? Yes, let's. I mean, because, because, you know, it used to be old hat. Rob, Rich, and Matt, well, go to any con, you can't swing a dead cat without seeing those three dudes together. And now... This is the first time we've been together. And they no longer allow dead cats in the convention, so they right. can't swing those. <laughs> COVID thing. And, then, and now we're never here. Like, this is the only the second time, second time since... Pre-COVID. Way pre-COVID, because you didn't do the last two cons before COVID. Yes. So, yes. way mid-year before COVID was even an idea or a concept, Unless you were a scientist who knew there was a thing called COVID, we haven't done this. We've done it once in Vegas. Vegas, yeah. So Vegas. Here we are. So you're welcome, Chicago. We're yeah. finally done. Uh, now all those questions you've been dying to ask. R two M, R two M, back in business. Yeah. Although I will say now, because because we all know that Rob Bendix is a comedy genius, and Rob will text me whenever because I I haven't been doing a fair share of these, and then Matt will say he can. And then Benedict Cumberbatch will say, come to, come to the pool party, and he's out. You know, like he's, you know, I, don't, I don't know that until Friday at Soundcheck. <laughs> don't you usually know that when you're walking on stage for the panel? Like, Matt won't be joining you. Usually Soundcheck, shit. it's a fun game I like to play with Hillary. At Soundcheck, I'll be like, is Matt canceled yet? And she's like, yep, about an hour ago, man. Okay. And so there's a, so Rob will always send me, he's like, he's like yeah, yeah, you're not here, Rich, and uh, no Matt. And then he'll send me an emoji of a microphone followed by an empty chair. <laughs> Which makes yeah. me laugh every time. I mean, it's... Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the greatest is when the, my... The, like, so your uh, meet and greet, your R2 a meet and greet is, uh, was canceled. We gave people the option to stay and just talk to you or to, <laughs> to buy something else and almost everybody <laughs> bought something else. <laughs> okay, okay, got that hour off. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> All right, let's take some questions. Take some questions. You, over there. Hi, I'm Amber. Um, I have a question about the podcast. Um, are you guys gonna like knowing how the show ended, um, especially like with Cass's ending? Are you guys gonna like is that gonna influence how you guys talk about the show or see it or watch it? Well, I mean, so she's referring to a podcast that Rob and I host called Supernatural Then and Now, um, which for those of you who don't know, uh, is a rewatch podcast where. Rob and I watch the show. We don't, we don't, we're not watching it as part of the podcast. We've watched it in advance of the podcast, uh, typically for the first time, because Rob and I... Yeah, we're watching it in order for the first time. And we haven't seen a lot of the episodes. Most of the episodes I've not seen. And then we bring on a guest, usually somebody like, well, obviously we've had, you know, the actors on it, but we also have the crew. We have, you know, the DP. Who had something to do with that episode. Yeah, and, and so it's brilliant. It's kind of a deep dive in each episode, and it's fun, and it's funny, and it's interesting. And certainly I'm learning, because I'm watching the show. Right. And you're learning, because right. you're also watching the show. Right. Um, Bets, you're, like, we will get to the, we'll do all 15 seasons, and, I mean, I'm looking at a, I look at each episode as a standalone episode watching for the first time. So, I mean, I obviously know what happened in some episodes, but that's not going to influence how I talk about it in advance. I mean, when I watch it and I, I'm now looking at it in its grand scheme of order from the whole series, whatever my opinion is. Yeah, at this know, point, we don't know who Castiel is. You know what I mean? We, we're watching it in order and having, and, and honestly, there are certain things that I still don't know how it happens or what happens. Right. You know, I, I, we kind of, we're, we just finished season one. I don't know what happens next, so yeah. we got a lot of stuff has been real surprising because we have not watched the show. Well, it's been really interesting to. But we'll watch get it. we'll get to that for sure, and then we'll talk about it. Yeah, after I mean, that. so I mean, I don't know if that's kind of a, I suppose a vague answer, but it, it's a on a, a vagueish question and like if it'll be influenced. And I don't think right now Rob and I are just kind of trying to be as you know come in cold as much as we can and just be honest with our opinions. It's. Uh, it's a really fun time to kind of debate the pros and cons of a show that we both like and respect a tremendous amount. Well, that's the thing. It's like the, the takeaway for me is like sitting down and actually watching the show from the beginning. Just finished season one. It's a really good show. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's a really good show. And, uh, you know, and, and, you know, I feel like season one and season two get written off sometimes. It's like, oh, that was Monster of the Week. Like, I loved it, man. I had a great time. Yeah, so far, it's, it's phenomenal. Anyway, I hope you're listening, and, and, and then you'll know what we think of those episodes when we get to them. Thank you. So, question for Rob. Um, assuming that your co-stars, not only on Supernatural, but any other show you've been on, have seen the movie Waiting, how often do you get, um, do they play the, the game? 
Oh, gosh. Uh, I thought you were asking me about peeing in public. Uh, which has makes, nothing to do with the movie. This makes sense if you've seen Waiting. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, the game, I'm trying to think if anybody's ever asked me. People have asked me about it. No one's played with me. No one's ever said, hey, look at that. Here's the bat wing. No one's ever... I kind of feel like at this point, isn't that a cancelable event? Like if... Yeah, I think right at this point, yeah, it might be. You know, with my, especially with co-workers. Yeah. You know what I mean? In a work environment. All I'm saying is you might have a goat coming at you at some point today. Look out. Okay. <laughs> Matt Cohen. If anybody I work with, it would be Matt Cohen. He, he likes the movie before he met me. <laughs> so, much. so he knows what we're talking about. And I love the game. And I, I'm willing to get canceled for it. So there you go. <laughs> I'm not going to cancel you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, Benedict, excited. I'm actually kind of excited. Yes. Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> Benedict Cumberbatch will make sure that he's never canceled. But <laughs> you. Hi, I'm Erica. My question is, if you weren't in Hollywood, what would you be doing? Uh, so, if we weren't in the in the filmmaking, TV making business, what yeah. what would our job be? Yes. Interesting question. I, I I could I could have seen myself becoming an attorney. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing that they're laughing. But my dad was my dad was a lawyer. Look, my dad told me years ago when I was when I wanted to be an actor, he said, "Hey, because I was I was worried that he was gonna think that pursuing the arts was a bad idea, you know, come from a certain southern upbringing." And my dad said, "You know, go do what you want to do." He's like actor, lawyer, preacher, DJ. It's all the same job. You're just selling something different. So do what inspires you. And so I think I could have, I don't think DJ and Preacher were on the list, but I could have seen myself following him into the law. See, I think you would have been a great sort of uh, small town politician. Well, I don't know much about much, but let me tell you this. <laughs> we're gonna save our clock tower. <laughs> Your Honor, I don't mean to laugh in the courtroom because that's a dishonor to the flag, but I'm forced to chuckle at this very moment based on the preposterous proposal by my defendant. Rich State, small town return. <laughs> anyway. I feel like that's Matthew McConaughey in another 30 years. Right there. Yeah. You might be right. It's Matthew McConaughey meets uh, Andy Griffith. Yeah, there you go. Anyway, that's my answer. Matt Cohen, what were you? Uh, uh, not an actor. I, you know, I don't know. I, 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 would, I would probably be a... Um, uh, I don't know, you know, I always wanted to be in some sort of uh, fight sports back in the day when I was a younger person. Not so much now. Um, I would like to be a farmer. I would, I would, if I wasn't on TV, I would like to be as far away from things all TV as I could. Uh, the chaos of Hollywood and, and everything that comes with it. I would like to own a bunch of acres and grow all sorts of fruits, vegetables, and of course cannabis. And make everybody happy. And live out my life with my family and my kid running through the lanes of our vineyard. Wow. Oh, well, and so you got grapes too. Grapes. Gotta have grapes. I just had this image of Matt while he took that dramatic pause trying to figure out what his answer was. I just had this image of himself in his own mind at Google going, jobs hot people do. <laughs> can, I, can I be shirtless if I. <laughs> Qualification ripped abs and shirts. Farmer, just no <laughs> shirt and a nice sun hat and no shoes. There you go. I would love to visit you on that farm. Listen, I'd love Get to have you. Get in We'd love to have you at Cohen's Cannabis Cropery. Oh, I love it. And winery. And winery. Um, I, when I was in college, I, uh, my backup profession was going to be advertising. Um, I don't know why, that was just like something that I felt like I could be creative and still do, but it but it had more, uh, you know, uh, uh, job security than acting. Um, so that was that was my backup was uh, advertising, like Mad Men. I thought, you know, I when I was uh, in high school, I thought about the same thing. I remember going to visit, and uh, my dad had a friend who worked in an ad agency, so I kind of spent a day following him around. And that's what my grandfather did. My grandfather was a jingle writer for a career. He wrote. Wow. Yeah. He, that, he, that, yeah, that now that I write jingles for our other podcast, I'm like, I think I could do jingle writer. Jingle writer, right? Like, yeah. that, so that was what, that's what Walter Spate did for a living. It's wow. Spate Advertising. He wrote wow. jingles. Yeah, so. <laughs> you could have done a little jingle for my law firm. And every, and every jingle was like, oh, come on down. The Wilson's Lumber. 
and get yourself a nice Wait, first of all, two that, by four. Yeah, we will see you. There we go. You got, you got, you got to get the jingle parts. Yeah. <laughs> the the, the, the no, is the guy talking. Nothing but wood at Wilson's Lumber. I actually, I actually know one of his jingles. I got, I know one of his jingles. Okay. I have memorized. Okay. There was a Mr. Transmission Shop. You guys remember Mr. Transmission was a chain of like, almost like a Jiffy Lubes or something, but in, the, in advance of that, Mr. Transmission. And a man who ran it was Harvey LeMaid. And Mary LeMaid cut my hair. And Harvey was her husband, Harvey LeMaid. And the jingle was, you got it made in the shade of Harvey LeMaid, Mr. Transmission Shop. You got it made in the shade of Harvey LeMaid, Mr. Transmission Shop. Well, that melody is so dear to me. I sing it, I just can't stop. You got a maid in the shade with Harvey LeMaid, Mr. Transmission Shop. Wow. That, that, that's a Walter Spade original. That's pretty damn good, man. It must be good because it stuck with me for 40 years, so. <laughs> Remember when everything had a jingle? Like, coming up, like every, every commercial had some sort of jingle that you sang and knew and you didn't know why you were singing that. Honda jingle for the local yeah. Honda dealer. Yeah. Everything had it. Well, because we had lo we had more local spots. Yeah. yeah. More still, local. They, there still are. Like I, I watched the baseball games uh, on the local channel, and you still get those get those little, like uh, ah, there's one for the plumber. Anyway, yeah. Um, they, they, they still have jingles. Yeah. I guess you have to watch live TV. I don't watch a lot of live TV. Right. That's why right. part of it's right. lost on me. Um, did you say yours? No, you're, you're advertising. Okay, so there we go. So there, there we know. Now we know. Thank you for your question. That was a good one. Um, yeah, right there. Hi, I'm Jordan, aka Chai Con Baby, and my question is for all of you. So last night karaoke was awesome as usual. Great. But I was wondering if maybe somewhere down the road, themed karaoke might make a comeback, like maybe fruits instead of vegetables. Ooh, ooh, that's an, that might be an Adam Fergus question. Oh no, you're still, you still, you're, you're never there. Well, I'm never there, yeah. but when I'm there, I would happy. Listen, I've been a fruit for a long time, so I just stumble right out, and uh, yeah. we can make that happen. I think. Yeah, but you guys, you guys are the originator of the like speak on behalf. Of oh man, we, we were, we were. I mean, every year was a different theme back when this all started. I mean, we were, we were costume shopping on the reg together. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, peas and carrots was one of them. Peas and carrots. High school was one of them where. Uh, yeah, I we was wore, a cheerleader. Yeah, I can't. I wore. I don't know. I guess I was a cheerleader too. I can't no, remember. didn't you okay. dress like Jensen? And or a coach? Yeah, yeah. I was, the, I was the coach in the shorts. We did uh, Game of Thrones, where you were Khaleesi. Game of Tones. Game of Tones. Game of Tones. Uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, yeah. where you were George Carlin. That's right. <laughs> um, we had. Uh, when were we met? Were we Men in Black? No. When were we wearing all suits? We were, we were Blues Brothers, right? That was for like a Halloween. I think that was a, or a Reservoir Dogs or something like that. Uh, Reservoir uh, Dogs. That was for a, that was a one-off one. Yeah. We did some creepy Halloween ones. Oh, there was the one where Victoria did our makeup and we all looked like creepy skulls. And we that were was the awesome. dad that did Walking, the zombie dads. Walking dads. Well, Walking dads. dads. Yes. But we did the zombie. We did the scary makeup one, and you were David S. Pumpkins. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And as and then uh, there was thing one, thing two, thing two and a half. So you just try it. Um, Which I still have that costume, and my son wore it for his Halloween, and so he just went his thing two and a half. That's awesome. And we have uh, we had old '70s stuff like bell bottoms and sparkly vests and yes, stuff. We did. Um, oh, we did the Big Lebowski. Yeah. We did. Yeah. Was that for a whole year? Did we, did we do no. the Big Lebowski? Was yes. it? Was it? Was it? Wasn't I Jesus with the? Bowl? Oh yeah, yeah, you were. That's right. Wow. Were you Lebowski? Wow, I thought I made that up completely no. in my mind. Anyway, uh, I, think, I, think what, I, think what you, I think you've talked to the right guy, because what Matt will do, even though Matt is off interviewing A-list celebrities, he'll pass this information on to Adam Fergus, who's kind of the other, the other guy. Yeah. And, and Fergus, it's time for Fergus to pony up at the themes, you know what I mean? Time to get, get Fergus on board. Yeah, but I think what her question is, will you ever be back? To, 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 to kind of a, you know, try like getting the Eagles back together, you know what I mean? Get what? Get you and Matt back together, OG, for a one-off karaoke, just like we used to. If you host it, I'll do it. I was never the host. Doesn't matter, I'll wait to host it. I, I'll, I'll, I'll want you there for the big intro. No, I'll come as your sidekick, which is what I always did. I was the, your, both of your sidekicks. You know what? I, I know we'll never go back to this, so I'm not suggesting this, but costume-wise, you know what was fun? What? I think it was fun. You might tell me it wasn't fun. The old uh, elastic waistband. Oh, that was fun. Yeah, that was fun. That's that, real that was like the first. Yeah, that yeah. was like OG, OG, OG. Yeah, yeah. I don't think we had karaoke then, or maybe we did, but it was brand new. Yeah. 
Anyway. I think I'm, I'll, I'll try. I'll try to get these guys back for we'll one-off karaoke where we all put on the costumes like we used to do. Dust it off. Yeah. For old times' sake. I, you know what I think it is, too? I think we're kind of waiting for this COVID to go away so we can take those silly-ass pictures we always do during karaoke. So yeah. I think we're working towards it. And the Moose Knuckle close. Corridor. Game of Inches. And, and oh, I think, apparently that's that. still a... a Adam, was, Adam was telling me it's, it's even... There's a big gap between the stage and the folks. Which is a bummer. I used to like it when everybody was up front, so hopefully we'll get back to that. Anyway, thank you for your question. Try safely. She's a, she looks, she's the Impala. Oh, yeah. Ooh. And so you are. Sarah. Yeah, there she goes. Sarah That's Real awesome. Driver. That is so music. cool. Um, all right, you're right there. Hi. Um, so I have a very weird question. It's one of my favorite get to know you questions. If you could have a liquid come out of each index finger, if you can turn it on and off, which would those liquids be? Um, so that, that's, a, that's a get to know you question? That, yeah. like, tequila, vodka, rum, gin, and soda. Hey. I'd go with uh, Campari, sweet vermouth, and High quality London gin, because you got to make a Negroni. You got two more fingers, dude. Mezcal. Uh huh. And ice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot water. I guess I'm going to die. No, you, you don't have water. I let, the, I let the ice melt. Ice melt, okay. okay. I mean, I'll give you practical water. Sparkling water. Okay. You got a fancy hand. Uh, yeah. Coffee. Okay. Hot tea. And juice. I thought for sure you were gonna say urine. But if you <laughs> But if you if you're pee shy, then no one would know. If nothing has to come out, you're just over there going like But if you need me, I'll be hanging out next to Matt's hand. <laughs> well that's true anyway. <laughs> Is that gross? Is that gross? That's not gross. He's got He's got vodka coming out. That Rob, Rob constantly sucking on his finger. Benedict. Yep, I'll be right there. You're biting. You're biting. You're biting. Mr. Cumberbatch. <laughs> <laughs> when you finish your latest film. <laughs> With me on his finger. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Cumberbatch. So sorry about this. <laughs> Suckling at the finger T to Matt Cohen. <laughs> Thank you. Who are that? You're not wrong. You know, when you said you had a weird question, I was going to say, there are no such things as weird questions. There are, and you found one, and thank you. You. Hi, my name's Cassie, and uh, I got married two weeks ago, and part of leading up to, um, you know, marrying my husband was forcing him to watch Supernatural. And um, so when he was my boyfriend, and I would not let him watch all the previews to the episodes because he would guess what would happen every single time. Right. So... We were watching the episode where Chuck is introduced as the prophet, and he goes, that's God. And so my question is... Are you married to Eric Kripke? <laughs> no, but I'm from Toledo. There you go. Um, but, um, so my question is, when did you know? Because I feel like he figured it out sooner than you did. Yeah, he did. <laughs> well, I mean, not really, because technically Rob knew years ago. Your boyfriend just said it two weeks ago. So technically Rob wins. Um, I didn't know until the end of season five while we were shooting it. Um, uh, and that's the episode where um, I kind of like uh, narrate that it's, it's Swan Song and narr narrate the episode and then I, I'm wearing all white and I kind of go poof at the end. And, yeah, I didn't know until right before I shot that, uh, Eric Kripke called me and was like, hey, you're, so you're God. And I was like, I am? Is that what this means? And, uh, and then, um, yeah, and uh, I, you know, that was Eric Kripke's last episode. So he, he after that, he, he left the show, and I think the idea was that I was kind of him. And, um, and so he kind of took me with him. And he even said, he was like, so, you know, you're God. And I was like, oh, that's amazing. And then he was like, and you probably won't be back on the show. And I was like, oh, that's awful. <laughs> and, um, but the sh he, I don't think he knew the show was gonna run for as long as it did. And so it finally, the plot worked itself around for, it made sense to bring God back, and uh, that's when I came back to the show. But uh, yeah, but I, yeah, I knew it was season five. Congratulations. Yeah, but congratulations on being married, and yeah. your husband's, uh, well, he's a prophet. 
Um, over here, young lady. Hi, I'm Christy. Hi, uh, Hi. I love you all, but my uh, question is for Robin Rich. Uh, what is your favorite part of doing an album? Doing an album? Well, I'll defer to Rob, who's done so many albums. Robbie, what's your favorite part about doing an album? You mean photo album, right? Like putting pictures together of your friends and family? Uh, no. To me, it's just to walk down memory lane, you know, and get those pictures arranged. Just them right, just right. Yeah. How many put on each page? And, um, my, no, my favorite part of doing, uh, putting together music um, like that is, uh, well, um, you know, it's just, you, you have this vision of what a song's going to be, you know, I, I write all my own songs, and so you have a vision of what the song's going to be, but it's, it really doesn't doesn't get there until you've got all the pieces uh, in the studio. Um, and with Loud and Swain, it's like it's not really a song until these guys are playing on it. And with my solo record that I just did, it was uh, you know really wasn't a song until I had these other musicians put their parts into it. And it just it's really it's just this magical feeling when you you get that first mix back and you hear all the parts. And, turn it up in the car and just like feel very proud because the song sounds amazing because it sounds like a real song. I, I think it's, it's an equivalent to directing a movie, you know, you, you know, or, or, you know, what you did with your, both of you have done with your shorts that you wrote and then you shot and then you, you get the cut back, you know what I mean? And you watch it and you're like, okay, okay, this is a film, this is a film. It's just like super exciting and you make tweaks and you do all the things, but it, it, I liken it to that because you, you know, you, you write the songs like writing the script, and then you get all the people in the studio, it's like shooting the movie, and then you, you cut it together, you like you cut a movie, and then, then you've got the product, and it's just, it's very gratifying. It's a very gratifying experience. And for me, I never think about whether or not people are gonna like it, or making money off of it, or anything like that. For me, it's enough to have just made it. And like, people, other people appreciating is like icing for me. It really is icing on the cake. Because especially with making music for me, it's it's really, it's it's that it happened. Uh, I'm just I'm just very proud with that it, that it actually happens and it's a thing. You know. I'll just give a brief answer because I don't have a fraction of Rob's experience, but just recording a little bit when I was in a band in high school and then recording the Dick Jr. and the, uh, the Volunteers album. To me, the joy is I love music. I love playing music, and I love watching and listening to great musicians do great things. And it's so fun to be in the studio for me to just watch everybody else do what they do at the highest level. And I feel like a kid in a candy store. So to me, it's pure joy and pure fun. And let the chips fall where they may in terms of people listening to it or, or downloading it or, or you know taking it home and loving it. But I love the process so much that to me, it's just, you know, it's like, Pure fun. I'm not trying to, you know, it's not my, it's not my career. I don't, I'm not making a living on it. You know what I mean? And I don't, and Rob even writes these songs. I, I wrote one on the first album. To me, it's, it was covering a lot of songs that I grew up loving. So it was just really an exercise in how to have fun with great musicians. Do you think you'll make another one? I do. Yeah. No. Is that in the works already? Uh, no, but we have some stuff that we recorded from, that we didn't go in the first album. So we already have a couple of tracks sitting around that we already love. And then Billy Moran and I wrote a song that we recorded that you, you're aware of. And so we already have like four tracks and then probably gonna, you know, do a couple more. And so, you know, at one point I was gonna just do it, just drop it out during COVID. Then I'm like, nah, do four more songs, make it a full thing. And, Cause I never got to play in support of the record. I'm sure you had the same problem where like, COVID happened, you couldn't go, you guys couldn't go on tour. You couldn't go do the thing that you want to do when you have your record out. And I mean, when we were going to do that with you guys, with you know, we were all going to sort of just go on the road as like, because Dick Jr. and the Volunteers and Station Breaks and Loud and Swain, there's a lot of overlap in the musicianship. So the idea of doing that and going on the road supporting what would now be both records is very exciting to me. So I, I would love to like get that second one done and then just do a brief tour to support both of them. Well, that's my goal. Thank you for the question. You. Uh, hi, um, so I know Rob's mentioned a Kings of Con movie a few times. I'm just wondering if there's any updates or anything else you can say about it now. Uh, not really. I mean, it's a, it's a project that's in development. I mean, it's certainly an idea that Rob and I love that we want to keep alive somehow. Um, so it's, uh, you know, I'm always a say less than more guy, but because I don't like to jinx things, but we're working with people who have interest in the project, but it's gonna be, it's gonna take a while, and we like where it's headed, and we hope it keeps moving forward. There you go, that's my political answer. Rob, do you have anything you wanna add? 
I'm, a, I'm more of a say too much and then uh, <laughs> and the yeah, it really is that sort of thing. Rob's, Rob's the, the guy who talks about everything, and I'm the one who goes like, "Nope." I've written the script. The script is done. We're just uh, we're just waiting for the the time to open up to actually do it. Rich is a busy man, and uh, he's working on another project right now. So as soon as there's a window we that we have open, we'll move forward with this. But I have every belief that it will happen in the next few years. Thank you. Yeah. Hi. Hey. So Matt actually inspired this question, but I'm going to address it to all of you because I think it's a cool one. Um, if you could be in the MCU, what would you want that to look like? What would you want your powers to be? Who would your superhero team be? Like, what would your character arc be like? Can I ask one quick question? Just because I don't, I didn't know what this reference was earlier. What the fuck is the MCU? Oh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. <laughs> okay. I thought it was a, a, a college that Benedict Cumberbatch attended, and you were like, uh, I'd like to go to the MCU. Oh, uh, jeez. <laughs> Uh, Dad. Hey, listen. I make no bones about the fact that superhero movies and I are not in lockstep. Um, but I didn't see the Doctor Strange one. Because Best question. question. The fuck is the MCU? Yeah, but I, I'm not embarrassed by that question. That feels like that's a genre thing I don't know. I don't know that stuff. So yeah. I have no idea. I'm gonna let, I'll let these guys who know right. and like that world answer you. Um, so, like, we're making up a superhero, not one that already exists? It can be one that already exists if you want. It's like whatever your ideal would be. Like, if you wanted to take over for a superhero, cool, but right. I wanted to give you the option to create one. What do you think, well. Matt? That's tough, you know? I, I've always, I, my dreams of all dreams, and I don't know, is Batman's not MCU, right? Or is he? Oh. It doesn't matter what you all think. I don't want to be Batman. I do, at some point, before I out-age the role, would love to uh, have, a, have a shot at playing the Joker more than any other superhero ever. Um, Is that MCU? Yeah. No. That's what they just Is said. that a rival college? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Boy, when they play in the fall, it's gonna be brutal. I think, uh, just generally speaking, to be, you know, I've talked to some of the, the, the newer people that have entered the MCU, and man, Everybody shares the same excitement, and that is just being part of a superhero movie. It's so big, it comes with so much, the production of it takes so long, and there's so much behind it. And it. Just to be any character in the MCU is a gift, you know? You really, it's the movement right now. I mean, it's, it's, it's the, these movies are getting bigger and bigger, and they're not going anywhere anytime soon, so just to be part of that in any way, shape, or form, um, even if it's just Benedict Cumberbatch saying I'm hot and should be the, in the MCU is good enough for me. I, I, before Rob, if you don't mind, one thing I was going to say is I have seen the Doctor Strange, the most recent Doctor yeah, Strange. Yeah, you said that, yeah. And that is filmically, I mean, that's a stunning accomplishment. I don't know how they make these movies. Because the visual effects are, every shot has a visual effect. You should watch the rest of them, they're all really I don't good. know like how, like just as somebody who dabbles in directing myself, that's so massive, I don't know how you undertake that. Mm -hmm. That's got to be huge. The directors on the red carpet, when by the time I get to them, I'm like, you know I'm so excited to talk to these directors that make these right. things. And I'm like, what does it take to make something so large? How excited are you? And they're like, I'm just exhausted. <laughs> oh, and, and I'm so glad the movie's gonna play for people. All right. like, they're spent, these guys. Yeah. The producers, Kevin, like all these dudes and women put in so much effort to make these movies gigantic on, on such a scale. And as you've seen, so, so uh, a spider, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, the animated film, everybody know this one? Yeah. Has opened up a new generation of films like Doctor Strange Into the Multiverse, that multiverse stuff. in which you can have several versions of female, different races of the same character throughout all these movies. And that's what you're gonna see going forward in all of the movies. Wow. All of them. Several different Spider-Mans and so on and so forth. And it's really cool. And it's complex. Man, that great. new Spider-Man was great. So, so cool. So amazing. Just to have those uh, the, all the guys back and with the with the three with the two OG guys. Yeah, did you see that? Yeah, saw that. You saw that. Look yeah. at you. All of a sudden I don't know. Like, I don't get this. What the super I'm, look, I'll let these guys in. I don't know superheroes. Fuck the superheroes. Oh, I love that movie. That was great. Yeah. That was great. <laughs> Cinematically that was Beautiful. They're great. They're 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 true. Like they're they're. I have kids, so I go uh, where they want to go. Sure. And so I go see the thing. That still counts. But right? what I can't differentiate is I don't know what superheroes are part of one right. team. Like you said, Batman and got booed. Like I like I don't know what the difference is between the uh, they're all so superheroes. D DC is uh, Batman, Superman, Aquaman. 
Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman. and then you know Marvel is everybody Spider -Man, else. Superman. Yeah. Uh, no, Spider Man, not Superman. Not Superman. No. Where's he? Thor. Thor. What's it? Uh, Superman is DC. Is it? Yeah. Iron Man, Man Deadpool, DC. those are all Marvel. No, it's DC. No. Deadpool. DC. Anyway, to answer your question, I. Uh, I just thought of it when Matt said that what we're going to see is different universes uh, are going to open up and we're going to see all different types of people playing the characters. I was, at first I was going to say somebody in WandaVision because I really love Wanda and I love WandaVision so amazing. But based on what Matt said, I think I'm going to be a 50-year-old Spider-Man. And that's going to be the joke of it is that my back hurts and I can't always get the webs to come out. Sometimes I just like to sit down, take a knee. <laughs> I don't look great in the suit, but I've always wanted to be Spider-Man. He's, he's, he's because he's a kid. And I've always felt like a kid at heart. So, I'm old man Spider-Man. Old Spider-Man. Spy, Spider-Pappy. <laughs> Spider-Pap. Spider-Old Man. Thank you for your question. You. Hi, uh, since Chuck was quoted, correct me if I'm wrong, since Chuck was quoted as making a universe where everyone is a squirrel, I want to know what universe you guys would have liked to have seen in the show instead of just the normal universe and everything like that. It Chuck said everybody's a what? Uh, I, I, like I said, there's, a, there's all these different universes. There's right. you know, one universe where everybody's a squirrel. Oh. Uh, when you use, everything's yellow. You know, gotcha. there's just like everything. So what, what would you, what universe would you like to have seen in Supernatural? Different universe where the world is what? The world is all Simpsons. Everybody's Simpsonified. Everybody's Simpsonified. That's good. I would have loved to see uh, Young John and Young Mary, which you're gonna see in the Winchesters, folks! I'm, I'm actually, you know, it's... To me, I'm like, ah, I outage those roles, obviously, but I am truly excited to see what, what they do with that show, as well as Walker Independence, Jared's other show. I, you know, these guys are really doing some fun stuff. I, John and Mary, has always, has, it's always been so interesting to me. I don't know what they're gonna show, I don't know anything about it, but it's gonna be good. Those, those young folks, they have to play those roles. It's gonna be really amazing to watch them explore, you know, how, how it all came to be. You know, it's interesting and, ex and exciting. But what she didn't answer the question, what's your universe? What? What's the universe? No, that's the answer to the question. Okay. Wait, I'm, talk, great. I'm talking you're, around yeah, the answer. It's funny, you're so entertainment tonight now. You're like, no, it's great, all the universes. Let me tell you what, the thing those kids are doing. <laughs> really love it, the work that they're doing. It's like I have a malfunction inside and I can only promote people's shows. <laughs> Speaking of which, have you seen Jitsen on the Boys? It came out yesterday, first three episodes. Yeah, my son is so excited about that. I interviewed him and it was incredibly awkward because I had a six minute time slot on a Zoom interview with him and two other people. And it starts with the first five and a half minutes going, Ackles, Cohen, Ackles, what's up? And they, you know, Entertainment Tonight has gotten me eight questions that I have to ask three different people in six minutes. And I'm like, guys, okay, for the rest of this, I need you to give me speedy answers. I'm gonna ask them to talk like this for the whole time. It was terrible. It was terrible. Wow. I think I, I love that Matt's a successful interview guy, but I will say, it's weird now that every conversation you have ends with him going, now back to you in the studio, Claire. Exactly. Yeah. Or, or head pad is the thing they make you do on every red carpet. Head pad is like, so when you see me on TV and, and the other host is talking before they, I start talking, I'm looking into a camera going, but I don't hear anything they're saying, so they go do 10 seconds of a head pad in which you just smile and oh lie God. to the camera, where you're just like... <laughs> yeah, that's right, Kevin, I'm here on the stage of oh Supernatural my God. with Rob and Rich. And it is like, it's so funny, because they always are like, we gotta be authentic, we gotta create authentic moments. I was like, I've never acted so hard on anything in my life. Like, I never phoned it in. <laughs> like you have to. What's phone the thing it? you did on the on the uh, the soap opera where the, at the end of the scene you had to do that look? Oh, that's the worst. What's yeah. that called? They call that the tag. Okay, what's that? And so the tag is like dialogue, 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 and you finish, and then it's for the slow push, right? That builds a dramatic moment, but the slow push on the soap opera always lasts like 15 seconds, 10 seconds. On Supernatural, you get a slow push, like Dean says a thing, and then it's like. 
push, 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 cut to commercial. It's like three seconds. And the soap opera, it's like, but you know you love me, and you can't help that I'm a doctor, a priest, and a stripper. And then it's like, And, and, but then you can't say it perfectly still because then the people at home don't know the TV's pause. So you do a thing, you do a thing like this, where, you, where it's as, as like seven seconds went by, you're like. And then right at the end, right when you feel that camera get real close, so you bring it right back to the eye line and you're like, oh God. Yeah. That's that's it. It. Yeah, it is. Woo. It is. And it's the most ridiculous thing you ever do. You act Mercy. All right, in my universe of Supernatural, everybody is, no one is taller than 5'6", and so I am a giant. There we go. Thank you for your question. Yo. Hi, my name is Megan. Um, this is my first con ever. Welcome. Welcome. And, and you came dressed as Constantine. Good for you. <laughs> you guys are my favorite people ever on this whole show. And we can tell by your Constantine costume. <laughs> We're kidding. I'm kidding. I can't because I don't. Um, my question to you is, what is your favorite role ever? And it doesn't have to be supernatural. It doesn't have to be anything specifically related to supernatural. Favorite, favorite role, role ever, boys. That we've played or we appreciate somebody else playing? That you've done. Ah. Um, um, I'm gonna go with the most fun I've had with these two guys, and that's playing Matt Cochran, not Matt Cochring, as Sebastian likes to say. <laughs> Matt, Matt Cochran <laughs> in The King's Gun. This was my, uh, my favorite role. You're funny in that show. It was really fun. Um, I'll go with uh, Skip Muck and Band of Brothers. <laughs> well, You know, oh man, um, I am gonna go with. You know, I, I really, I, I recently I got to do something where I, I was I was on Lucifer and I'm playing this bad dude. He's French. He's a mercenary. And in this one episode, Kevin Alejandro's character comes back from the dead and is in my body. So I go from being this French mercenary to being Kevin Alejandro, and that was super fun to do. That was like a uh, super fun, uh, super fun. And it, the episode was directed by Kevin, and so I really got to sort of imitate him, and that was, that was fun to do. Thank you, and welcome to your first convention. I hope you have a good time. Over there. Okay, so I, I do have maybe a weird question. <laughs> um, if you had the choice between fighting one horse-sized duck or a hundred duck-sized horses, what would you fight and why? I'd fight the duck-sized horses because I'd just die from how cute they are. So at least if I got trampled to death, it'd be adorable. I mean, the horse size. That giant duck is terrifying. It's terrifying. I once got attacked by a duck that I wouldn't give my piece of bread to, and he jumped on my back and he clawed me up, and if he was the size of a horse, I would have no spine, it'd be like, that scene out of the DiCaprio movie where the bear's on his back. I just, I, yeah. I'm going with the cute horses. Right? Yeah. yeah. Tiny horses. Okay, but just to be devil's advocate, how many hundred? There's a hundred like, duck-sized horses coming at you. Yeah. Horses are fast. Yeah. I, I picture baby ducks, like ducklings. Yeah, they're gonna be about that. You're, you got a big duck going. I think a duck is like, yay. They're still gonna kill me. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be stampeded. No, it's a duckling. I'm not talking goose-sized horses. Uh, still, I'm just saying, I know I'm gonna die either way. I just wanna die with well, the Well, honestly, if I'm fighting a, a horse-sized duck. Right. Ducks aren't as fast as horses. I'm gonna run. You know, e either way, I'm running. You found a loophole, you, you clever son of a gun. So because, because they make those little mini horses. Yeah. So if the duck's the size of a mini horse, you could probably kick that duck's ass. Go with the go with where your gut's telling you to go. Go with the duck size, the horse sized duck, but make sure the horse is one of those mini cute little. I don't know things. if I've got that choice. She didn't specify breed. So I get to say in the moment, you know what? I'm gonna go with the yeah. mini horse as yeah. a, as a big duck. Okay. You, you just made a five foot six universe. I think you can pull this one off. Okay. Either way, I'm running. Yeah. But I'm running from that one big big ass duck. Thank you for your question. 
Hi, I, um, I work downtown Chicago and I was out Thursday at lunchtime and I saw a tour bus go by. Richard, right. Right. Richard, how was it filling in for Rob on the city tour when you're not a Chicago native? Great, easy, God bless cell phones. Uh, <laughs> So Rob uh, was going to give a tour of Chicago and uh, had to pull out, and so I stepped in and, and filled in for him and basically just took your itinerary that you've utilized in the past, and it was, and then I think Hillary and, and Jim Gannon kind of sweetened it by making a couple of suggestions that had worked well for you in the past, and don't do this, that's too long a drive, do this, and it was great. And you know, we sort of go to these places that I haven't seen, I'd been to the Bean once years ago. But uh, I had, that was it. And so I'd never seen out the outside of Wrigley Field. I'd never seen Shedd Aquarium. It was really, it was really lovely. And the weather's great. It's a great tour. It's a really it's fun a great tour. tour. You put together a good tour. My Thank man. you. And just for clarification, I never knew that I was hosting it. I never knew I was doing the tour. So I never pulled out because I didn't know what was happening. And then all of a sudden he was like, so when well, you're in Chicago, why not come on? I'm like, oh, I'll be there. And, and pulled out of the tour. Like, yeah, I, didn't know, I, I, didn't know I got the call from Creation saying, Rob pulled out of the tour. I, I had no idea I was doing a tour. So I, 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 all of a sudden, I was out, Rich was in, but I'm, I'm happy that you got to do it. And uh, I got to see Chicago. I got to see Chicago. I barely went on the Rob Benedict bus tour without yeah. Rob Benedict. Exactly, exactly. Uh, but yeah, no, I was, I was happy you got to do it, and uh, uh, it's a good tour. It's a it good was fun. It was great. Yeah. I learned much. But then again, I knew nothing, so it didn't take much. Well, that was how the tour was invented, because I knew nothing. And the fun thing about the tour is you go by and the, and the bus goes, what's that? And you're like, one sec. Hey Siri. Google, 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 Google. exactly. Where, Siri. Oh, hey Siri, yeah. Where am I? Um, thank you for your question. Let's squeeze in one more before we uh, get played oh. on stage here. Thank you. Um, hi, my name is Sarah, and I love the podcast. So I have a question for hopefully all three of you. So if Rob could choose a Pearl Jam song, if Rich could choose an R.E.M. song, and if Matt, I don't know your favorite band, but pick your favorite band uh, song for Saturday Night Special, which songs would you choose? If you guys, I know we've done a couple of R.E.M. tunes in the Saturday Night Special lineup, but you guys have never done a Pearl, like Pearl Jam has never been anything. We did it uh, for an opening in Seattle. Uh, we did... Uh, uh, Even Flow? A lot? No, we did uh, oh, like Why Go, or one of the other songs on 10. Why Go Home? Yeah, Why Go. Is that what it's called? Why go? Yeah. Okay, so you've done, so if you had to do it for Saturday Night Special. Saturday Night Special, um, can I think? Can you pick your R.E.M. song? Yeah. Wait, Matt, what's your favorite band? I would do, it's not my favorite, but it's a, it's a, a song I've wanted to sing for a long time at Saturday Night Special, but I don't have the vocals, even near vocals, to pull it off. Jimmy Eat World, The Middle. Ah, great song. Yeah. Great song. The one, of the, one of the ones I was going to say is one we already do occasionally, which is Begin the Begin, ah, which, great which song. we've done, yeah. and that's super fun. Uh, I was also going to say uh, Superman, which we've done. Don't go back to Rockville, which we've done. Uh -huh. So to mix it up, I'll say Driver Eight. Ah, uh, great, great, great song. song. Um, I'm gonna, I would do the song Go off of Versus. Song called Go. It's a, yeah, it's a great song. Excellent. Thank you for your question. Thank you for having us back. Thank you, It's great to all three be here, boys. Ladies and gentlemen, Rob and Rich. Rob Bennett, Rich Jr., Matt Cohen. Matt Cohen.